A few months back, Kodak contacted me and asked if I'd be interested in checking out some of their filament. I told them sure, and I expected the usual couple rolls of PLA, some PETG, things like that. Well, Kodak had some other ideas in mind. Let me show you. <clears throat> Direct from Amazon, who distributes their filament, came a Kodak sample pack. And we've got eight different versions of filament in here, ranging, of course, from PLAs, PETG, ABS, as well as nylon's flexible and support material. And instead of just doing the normal filament review, which honestly, most people don't really watch anyway, I really wanted to take this amount of filament and do a project with it. And so I thought about some projects that I had in my head in the past, and. I have always wanted to build a droid. Now, which droid? Well, let's start small. Let us build a pit droid out of this Kodak filament. It'll give us a chance to test it, see how it prints in some real projects. And I'm gonna show you how I walk through this, starting in this video, and then it'll be featured in some other videos down the road. And that's what I'm starting right here today on Curzy Fabrications. Let's go. So before we actually get into the project itself, let's take a look at the materials Kodak sent over to me. So first of all, we've got one PLA. This is a PLA plus, uh, color is gray 8402C. It is a 1.75 millimeter filament, which all of these are. I noticed a lot of these spools, most of these spools are 750 gram spools instead of the one kilogram spools. Uh, printing range on this is 210 to 240C. So it's a slightly higher temp PLA. Probably the plus in it, it should be a little higher uh, durability, maybe some higher temperature resistance on that. Looking at the package, uh, kind of nice, eco-friendly. It's a little bit lighter, thinner packaging that we, we usually see uh, from filament manufacturers. And little inner Kodak symbol container here. And then nice foil vacuum sealed container here. This is definitely gonna be keeping this filament dry until it's ready to use. And it is a Ziploc bag, which not a lot of manufacturers still do on these. So really happy with this packaging. Looks really good. Uh, we'll open this one later. This is gonna be the filament we start with. So let's take a look at what else we have. By the way, I did some research on these first. That uh, spool is $18.95 at the time of recording on Amazon. So that's about average price, considering that's a 750 spool. Uh, if you were to scale that up to one kilogram, it'd be somewhere in the mid-20s, just what you'd expect for a PLA. Next up is what they call PLA Tough. Uh, this one is a $40 a roll uh, filament. So like I said, much higher end filament, it's supposed to be a lot tougher. Uh, this is in the natural color. Now this one, obviously at one point in time was vacuum steel, still the same foil, still resealable. A Ziploc bag, but it has lost its vacuum. Next up, we've got a roll of PETG. This one comes in a nice orange translucent color. It is labeled 1505C. Vacuum sealed just the way it should be. Same sort of packaging, Ziploc bag. Looks great. Next up, ABS. This is uh, the red 485C. Looks nice. This one is also vacuum sealed the way it should be. And I normally don't print with ABS, but since I have moved my studio here and where I keep my uh, most of my printers to the garage, I'm not worried about it anymore. This won't be in the house. We got, next up, we have some nylon. They call this Nylon 6. Don't know what the 6 refers to. I'll have to look that up. Maybe put it on the screen after I figure that out. This is just labeled neon. I'm not sure which neon. Neon green, neon orange, neon pink. Oh, uh, prices on that, the PETG was... $19.95 a spool, ABS was $16.95 a spool, uh, getting really inexpensive for ABS. Uh, the nylon here, of course, goes up in price a bit. This is $32.99. Uh, it's not too bad, particularly if it's easy to print and adheres well to my bed. Same deal, still vacuum sealed, which is wonderful for nylon because this means that I won't have to dry this spool before I print with it. So 
Next up, we've got some Flex 98. So that is a 98 shore hardness on this Flex. Price on this one is $34.99. Not bad for a flex. Obviously, you can find it cheaper than that, but not bad at all. This is a black filament. Again, sealed, which is wonderful for this uh, flex PLA because it would absorb moisture in us uh, normally. Two left, I promise. Just two more. Next up, we have hips. So hips, if you're unfamiliar with it, this is high-impact polystyrene. Uh, they sent me over some white 11-4001 on here. If you're not familiar with hips, Hips can be used as a normal filament. A lot of people, uh, particularly in more industrial manufacturing, will use this as a support material because it is dissolvable. Price on their hips is $24.99, which is not a bad price for hips. And again, well-sealed spool here. No problem at all. And last, but certainly not least, we have PVA. So PVA stands for polyvinyl alcohol. And this is a very special filament. In fact, these only come in 350 gram spools and it's fairly expensive because that 350 gram spool is gonna cost you $35.99. Now, as far as I know, the only use for this filament is as a support material because it is water soluble. This one is no longer vacuum sealed. I actually can't tell if it ever was. There's no indentions or anything in the uh, metal packaging itself. So can't tell if it was ever vacuum sealed. There is a desiccant pack in it. So all out here on the table, this are the different filaments I'm going to have to print with. Now let's talk about the project itself. So where did this idea of building a droid and specifically a pit droid come from to begin with? Well, it obviously comes out of my love for Star Wars first and foremost, and then it's an extension of my love for building props and cosplay because obviously what we're building here is a big prop that can be used just to sit around your house and be part of the atmosphere or to go on adventures with you while you're cosplaying. So when I went looking for a droid to build, I had a lot of options, obviously. I could go with something like an R2-D2 from the R2 Builders Club. Uh, could have gone with any number of other droids to that scale. Uh, there are also great models from different designers like for full-scale battle droids. But for this one, I wanted to kind of start small. And when I went looking on various sites, whether it be free sites like Thingiverse or uh, pay sites like Etsy, which have a lot of great models that you can download. I found this pit droid, and it's a great smaller scale build uh, that you can build with a lot less filament and a lot less time, obviously, than if you were going to build something like a full scale electronics based droid like an R2D2. So, when I went looking, there were actually several options for a pit droid. My favorite pit droid model was one from a designer named Dave Moog, and he runs the Etsy store and Facebook group called droid division and he designs a number of different droids he designs them to be easily printed as well as includes instructions on how to put them together i really liked his models i thought they were the most screen accurate models that i could find and i really liked the amount of support he offered in terms of what people had said on his etsy store as well as the facebook group he offers for people to share their models and ask questions so that's the one I went with. Again, you'll be seeing some of those pictures of some finished droids here, as well as his Etsy store here on the screen. And I contacted Dave and he was really excited about the prospect of building one in a video. And I've been working with him on this. So I've got all the models, I've got the instruction. Now let's talk about how I'm actually going to print this. Well, if you've been following along on my channel, you know I just finished my Ender 5 Plus mods. And so I feel that printer is ready to go, particularly on a project this size. So let's clear all that off, put the Ender 5 Plus up here, talk about what we're doing first. So here we are, I've got my modified Ender 5 Plus ready to go. It's got my top five mods from my last video on it, as well as now has a Raspberry Pi and a Pi camera, all ready to go for remote printing and monitoring. So what's great about having a large scale printer like this is that I should be able to print things like the head of this droid as well as some of the limbs at full size, no need to scale them down, no need to print them in parts. And I'm actually going to test that first by printing the head of this droid. It's the most iconic part of the droid. It has that big nose on the front of it, the eye or whatever you want to call it that you boop and it becomes a, a little pancake droid at that point. So I'm going to start with that. Let's head over to the computer. I'll walk you through how I slice that part and then we'll get to printing. 
So here I am in Cura 441 uh, with my Ender 5 Plus profile loaded and my Curzi Fabrication Standard Quality. So what I did, I went ahead and loaded the head of this droid. As you can see, it fits this build volume just about right. Any smaller and it would not fit. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to find the best orientation for this model. I want to start by trying to see if I can print this with my 0.8 millimeter nozzle. We'll see if there are any problems. Keeping in mind, I have a 750 gram roll. I would like for it to print in one roll if possible. So let's take a look. Looking at the shape of this, I definitely don't want this to be the bottom, and I really don't want this to print vertically, even, it, even though it loaded that way. So I'm going to go ahead and lay this down this way. It's a really good shape for that because the overhangs are not too extreme. There's going to be some supports under here uh, that should keep it stable. I am going to want to print this with a raft so that this comes off fairly easily. So let's take a look at my settings. Start with the 0.2 layer height. Uh, if I'm doing a 0.8 millimeter nozzle, I do want to do three walls at least uh, for any size nozzle. I really don't want to go less than three walls uh, just for quality reasons. Looking at the rest of my settings, 10% infill should be good. Uh, the print temperature on here is 210 to 240. I usually, just because I know my printers fairly well, usually go about 10 degrees above the minimum. So we're going to start with 220, see how that prints. 60 on the bed for PLA is good. Again, and I am starting with the PLA Plus, which is the gray filament that they sent me. Uh, I always back off the flow just a little bit, so I'm at 98%. And uh, print speed 60 is good. That's a good average uh, speed. That's not too fast, not too slow. I want good quality here. So print cooling obviously is going to be on. I'm going to generate support on here. My support angle is 70 because I have a good cooler. And I'm going to do supports everywhere because I notice particularly like under here, this needs support. So I can't just do to the uh, build plate. I like concentric supports, particularly on things like this. I've got a nice round surface, so it gives it a good support structure. And let me see if there's anything else I need to worry about. So it has this new support interface, which creates this interface on the top between the support uh, towers and the print itself. I like the grid because that gives it a nice place to lay the next layer. And like I said, I'm going to do a raft. So let's see what this looks like in terms of uh, the time and the support situation. So here we are. It's all generated, ready to go. Notice there was a big lip all the way around um, that it's going to have to build a support for. I actually kind of like that. It'll stabilize the print at this point. Um, as you can see in an earlier iteration of this, I went ahead and added a few extra support towers to the outside to stabilize it. So going back down to the lowest layers, you'll see that it's got the support interface on my lowest layers. I'm hoping that these come off really easily so that I won't have any problems peeling that off. Now, this much of the print now is going to be the base. It's going to be fairly well supported. I went ahead and added some manual supports. These custom support is a plugin you can get from the marketplace. Went ahead and added these custom supports around the sides here so that would add a little stability about midway up the print. I think I may want to move those a little bit closer. Uh, these might be okay. This one needs to be closer for sure. So in order to do that, I can go back to the prepare custom supports. I'm going to just get rid of these. And then I can put them a little bit closer. And I'm just doing two side-by-side -side supports. It'll be one tower in the end. And then I can reslice. All right, so it is reslice. Let's take a look at the preview again. Again, it looks good. This is a lot closer now. That's fine that it's not exactly parallel to each other. And again, I'm getting supports here like I need to. These will be easy to clean out on the inside. You can even drill them out if I, if I had to. But this looks pretty good. I like this. Take a look though, this 807 grams is not going to work because that is over the 750 grams for the spool. Obviously, I could use my filament runout sensor and you know add another spool, but I really don't want to have to do that. I don't think it should be necessary. I think this 0.8 millimeter nozzle isn't really going to do the trick for us. So let's go back over to prepare. 
change it to 0 0.4. So I get this pop-up, it's saying, do I want to keep this? Yes, I want to keep all of those settings. And then let's just re-slice, same settings. So there we go, as you can see, just by changing the nozzle I'm using, I am now down to 660 grams, which is well under my 750. It gives me a little wiggle room in terms of if it weighed a little bit more or if there was any problems. Looking at the full model, everything still looks good. Looking at my infill, that looks fine still too. That's quite a bit of infill and I don't think there'll be any problem. So let's change this actually because that should be four walls. So let's slice that one more time. Okay, so obviously that made it a little bit heavier. We're at 690 now. No problem, still well under the 750. Shouldn't have any problems. I like my support structure, good base, uh, some supports on the side to keep it from bending when it gets about halfway through or wobbling, I should say. And then that last one should do everything fine. We are at two days and seven hours here on this print and go ahead and send that over to the Octoprint that I have attached to the Ender 5 Plus. So I just wanted to show you real quick sort of the process I go through when doing a really big print, particularly if I have some sort of filament that I don't want to waste and I want to make sure that I use every drop of it that I can, particularly if I might run out. So I've got the Ender 5 Plus behind me here on the unfinished side of my studio. As you can see, I have put a sample roll of filament in here, a little uh, roll down there. And what I've got is just, I wanted to make sure that that first layer of the print went down really well. And as you can see, this one did, went down really well. I have exactly what I was looking for and it's good all the way around. Everything's going down really, really nicely. So again, this was just to make sure I don't waste some of the filament putting down that first layer and then I'm gonna get really good bed adhesion. Also, since this is a big multi-day print, since I'm using glass, I went ahead and re-cleaned my bed right before this print, just to get any dust, anything else off. Went into the sink, dish detergent as usual. Everything is sticking terrifically. Now, what I'll do, I'll stop this print. I will switch out the filament and I will be ready to go with the actual print. And I'll give you updates as we go. And a couple days later, it'll be all done. So one more thing, I thought I'd let you join me as I opened up the filament. So again, this is the Kodak PLA Plus. I'll pop this out of the container here. Again, really well sealed, still airtight. This should print really well. Oh, I thought I was gonna need my knife, but I'm not because it actually has a pull tab. So if it tears well, that side tore, so I'm going to put from the other side, which also has a pull tab. And it opens. Here are nice, put it near my mic so you can hear this open. Yeah, there we go. And like I said, desiccant pack. And so here is the filament. It is a nice, it's a gray color, maybe a little metallic. I think I heard other people complain about the winding on these, and I know what they're talking about. The winding is not clean. It is wavy in here for some reason. I have no idea how you would wind filament like this, to be honest. So that's not the best. But if it doesn't tangle up, I'm not going to complain about too much, as long as it's not overlapped in there. And we've got a really big print, so we will find out if there is any problems uh, printing with this spool because there you can see if I can get it to actually focus on that. Let me see There we go. Now you can see it. That's what the winding looks like. It's not terrific But there it is. There's the Label right there So now you know what we are dealing with here. All right, so again I'm going to go and get this loaded up get the sample spool out of here and start the print I'll show you what it looks like as it goes down and throughout the print
All right, so the head of this droid is all done. As you can see on the printer, it actually finished beautifully. First try after doing that little test print to begin with, it has finished great. I will get this off the build plate and we will take a look. I'm expecting this to come clean off. I've got the glass build plate. It's had plenty of time to cool down. It's actually really cold here in the garage. So let's see if it comes up, even though it is a big build. Look, if anyone asks why I use glass, this is why I cleaned this right before I used it. And as you can see, it has come off without any extra fuss. And we have a droid head. As you can see, the filament did absolutely beautiful job on here. I have very little stringy. Here's the top of the head. And so we're going to see if we can actually get this off. If our supports are really good, this will come right off. If not, it's going to take a little bit of, uh, you know, pliers or, or screwdrivers or whatever to get this off. Let's see if we can get the ring off right now. Look at that. That is Cura 441 supports. I showed you my settings as we got started. And there are some... So the ring came off without any problem. Now I'm trying to get these little supports off that are used for the antennas. Well, that'll come off. And there we are. We are left with the top of the droid. See, these hopefully are going to come off without too much fuss, as well as the top of the head. And luckily, if the top of the head does not come off cleanly, it should be a fairly easy to sand area. So as you can see, it's coming off pretty well. And a lot of what's left is actually still, see this stuff that's coming off? This is actually support materials. It is not part of the head. So this is gonna have to be cleaned up. Uh, with some screwdrivers and some pliers and stuff, but again, I don't think I'm too worried about it. Hopefully these come off. I'm trying to get them to crack. Well, they cracked. Fortunately, they left a little bit of infill, uh, excuse me, supports in there. So anyway, I'm going to go clean this up now that I'm obsessed with it and have to finish it up now. So... As you can see, pit droid, really good size print. Again, I'm really happy overall with the Kodak filament. The underside looks really, really good. And this side looks really, really good too. Um, you know, there's actually some more slicer errors than anything on here. I can see that there are some starts and stops and stuff like that that are not as clean as they could be. It's also, as we move up, have a little bit less of an overhang, we see it less. This is going to clean up really well, though, as we, um, as we sand it down and have much less of an issue. So at this point, this is a cleanup job. Uh, even these things, which would not break off, uh, hopefully I'll be able to get them off with a pair of needle nose pliers, something like that. Worst comes to worst on something like this, I will be able to take a drill in here because these are just holes and I'll just drill them out. So I think we're good here. Let's, uh, let me get it cleaned up. I'll show you the final result before we take a one final look at this filament. Oh, one more thing. I do have a little bit of filament left in here. What I'm going to try to do uh, is print the rest of this eye out of the same filament. If there is enough here, I'm going to go slice it. Basically the same settings, but what I'd really like to do on this one is slice it back with um, a 0.12 layer height for the nose. Uh, for the rest of the eye socket there because I really would like to have it a little bit smoother than this since it's a detail piece. Anyway, there we go. I will meet you back over at the workbench. So here I am with my pit droid head all cleaned up and I am happy to say that almost everything on this came off as it was supposed to. Now to crack these little guys out, I ended up having to use a long screwdriver that I could get in here and really pry them out, but they did come out cleanly. I got all the way to the bottom. With the outer ring, you saw that came off as soon as I got it off the bed. Now, obviously the hardest part to get off of here in terms of supports were the ones on the dome. And as I show you this, you'll see that I've got a, a little bit of marring where I got a little overzealous with the Dremel trying to get it off. But ultimately, this is the tool I used to get it off. And it just took some scraping around like this 
to get it off with a sharp tool. Now, if you're doing that sort of scraping, make sure that you're very, very careful. Keep your hands above it as you scrape away, trying not to damage the layers of the actual print that you're trying to keep. As I'm showing you, I did nick it with the Dremel. I'm not too worried about it. I am going to do filler on this to get it all nice, clean, and smooth, and those sort of defects will go away. Overall, super happy with this print, happy with my Ender 5 Plus. It did a great job. Now, as for those other prints I was going to try to do, I did try to print the nose, and as you see, that's what's left of it. I've got a lot of stringing here, and unfortunately, that was my fault. I got a little overzealous with the angle of printing that I was trying to do, and honestly, I think it just got knocked off the bed at some point. It's not the filament's problem or the model's problem. It was just the way that I was trying to print it. So ultimately that didn't work out. And then I tried to print a much easier part, which is the inner eye and simply ran out of filament. So unfortunately that's all I got for this, but hey, look, this is a large print printed really good. It's very strong. That brings me right back to the Kodak filament. As you can see, printed the whole spool of this filament. So what is my overall impression of the PLA plus filament from Kodak? Well, Overall, it printed great. I cannot complain about the surface finish or any of the extrusion with this filament. It really came out clean. And one thing I can say about it, for a PLA Plus, this is really, really tough. I can't imagine how much tougher their PLA Tough filament's going to be because this is some very strong stuff. And I found that out when I was trying to scrape those supports off. It's a tough filament. You're gonna to have to be careful with your supports because they're going to be a little bit harder to get off if you're not careful. Now, the only complaint I had about this filament was in the winding of the spool. We saw that earlier in the video. It is not a nice winding. But as you can see, I printed all the way to the end of the spool without taking it off the printer once. And there are no tangles, there are no hang-ups, at least in my spool, so I can say I'm not too worried about it, at least from my sample set of one. I'm really excited that I finally got to start this project, and I hope you enjoy this sort of video because what I really wanna do is walk you through how I go about a project like this so that hopefully you can get some tips and tricks in terms of the way I slice the model, the way I print the model, the way I do support removal, and then ultimately how I finish this model as I get closer to completion. And uh, that's what I really want to do here with something like this is just more education on how I go through the 3D printing process. Now, I want to give a big shout out to Kodak for providing the filament for this project. I was really excited to see how well this filament printed. Obviously, going into this, I had no idea. I had not used Kodak filament before. And as you can see, as I was walking through it with you, you saw how well this worked out. If you're interested in buying some of this Kodak filament, again, this is the PLA Plus. I'll have links in the description that will take you directly to Amazon where you can purchase it. A big thank you to Droid Division for providing the files for this print. If you are interested in doing a project like this, building a Droid, go check out Droid Division's Etsy page where you can buy the files directly. Or if you want to see what they're working on, you can check out their Facebook page or check out their brand new Facebook group called the Droid Division Print Club where you can show off your prints, get help with your prints, that kind of thing. And you can talk to Dave directly to get any help on the prints. Again, thank you for watching this video. Thank you for subscribing to my channel. And obviously, thank you for liking and all of your comments. If you're interested in supporting this channel, you'll find links in the description to my Patreon page as well as to my PayPal directly. Again, thanks for watching. This has been Kersey Fabrications. See you next time.